your day. And to today we say thank you for loving us, caring for us, and guiding us. It's just to recognize all you do and all you are to us. You are perfect, wonderful, amazing children. Thanks for all the early mornings and for taking care of the things we take for granted. Thanks for never giving up on us, even when we stress you out. Thanks for making sure we have what we need and for making us your heart even when you're sick and tired. Thanks for working hard even when you're at hand and for loving us unconditionally when our attitude is anything but love. You are everything, Mom, and you'd be a mess without you. Today, we thank God for the wonderful gift of you. Happy Mother's Day. Let's all stand up in this place this morning. I want to thank each mother that's here today. We're all going to come together and give God praise this morning. This song is called Give Me Jesus. And I wish you would worship with us as we sing.
Come on, let's lift our voices one more time and praise the Lord this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. We praise you and we worship you and we exalt you. God, we thank you for this day that you have given us. We thank you, Lord, for what this day represents and what we celebrate. We praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Great to be in the house of the Lord today. Hallelujah. Very special day. Mother's Day. Amen. There's no day quite like Mother's Day. And I thank God for all of you mothers. I would like for us to do something. We're going to pray a blessing upon all of the mothers. But I want us to put our hands together in honor of all of the mothers, mothers that have already passed on. Why don't we do that right now? Fill this building with noise. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you right now, mothers deserve the honor. All that they go through and all of the pain and all of the giving birth to children and then all that comes into the sacrifice, raising those children and being a mother. A mother is a very special person. Amen. Mothers wonderful God relates the church to a mother amen he's the bridegroom church is the bride the mother gives birth to many many people in the kingdom of God and today's a special day a special day that we we celebrate together I am a blessed man, amen. I've got my wife that's been a great mother to my sons and grandmother to the grandsons. I have my mother-in-law with me. Thank the Lord, <laughs> hallelujah. And I've got two daughters, Maria, Sarah, and they got some babies that are just treasures and they are doing a great job at being a mother to those grandkids they call me k-pop amen and i'm so thankful that i have these ladies in my life i wish i could say i still have nanny and wish i could say i still have my mom hallelujah but I'm richly blessed, and I thank the Lord for that. And I thank the Lord for all of you mothers. Thank you for coming and worshiping the Lord today. Today's a special day, not only because it's Mother's Day, but, you know, my wife gets to do the speaking today. And so that... Uh, I, I get to watch her as she uh, nervously prepares for this day and preparing, studying, preparing, going through it over and over and over again. Amen. And I know we're going to all be blessed today. She always does a tremendous job. And I want to say Happy Mother's Day to all of you. Happy Mother's Day. Everybody just shout it out with me. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Those that are watching live stream, all you mothers out there, happy Mother's Day to you. Thank you for joining us on this day. Amen. I'm going to give you an opportunity to give in the offering and in the tithes. Let's just pray a blessing upon it right now. Lord, we pray your blessing upon the offerings and the tithes. I pray, God, that you would use it for your glory. And your will be done 
We pray your blessing upon each and every one in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Come bring your offering, your tithes. Everybody smile and wave really big at each other. Let each other know you're glad to be in the house of the Lord. My song is my triumph I enter the gates with nothing but thanks I want to magnify your worth I want to bring you more than words I enter the gates come reckless with praise I'll bring a heart that wants you first all for your glory Make this place an altar Sing, my soul will sing My soul will make this place an altar Make this place an altar Sing, my soul will sing My soul will make this place an altar Make this place an altar Sing, my soul will sing my soul will make this place an altar, make this place an altar. I enter the gates with nothing but thanks. I want to magnify your worth. I want to bring you more than words. I enter the gates, come reckless with praise. I'll bring a heart that wants you first. All for your glory I enter the gates With nothing but thanks I want to magnify your worth I want to bring you more than words I enter the gates Come reckless with praise I bring a heart that wants you first All for your glory
Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm so thankful for all of you mothers that are here today in the house of the Lord, worshiping the Lord with us. I'm going to ask my daughter, you can sit or be seated. I'm sorry, that sounded a little bit. You may be seated. I want to ask my daughter-in-law if she would to come. She has a special presentation for a dear woman in my life my wife and I'm going to say this you know the Bible talks about the virtuous woman and it talks about how the family, the husband, the children will praise them at the gate of the city I'm going to say this right now I definitely praise my wife because I'm telling you she is a great mother and she works hard she loves those kids and those grandkids, she sacrifices in ways that just make me ashamed because I, there's no way I can match that kind of motherly love and sacrifice that, that I have seen throughout my life. And I want to say Happy Mother's Day to my dear wife. Love her very much. And I'm so thankful. God knew what he was doing when he gave her to me. He knew what he was doing. There's been many things in my life that's been God things, and, and I've known that, and we've seen how God put things together throughout my life. And I'm going to tell you, looking back, she's one of them. God knew what he was doing. Amen. And I'm so glad to have my daughter-in-law up here. Amen. She's got something special for my wife. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. I'm so glad there's so many of you here today. Um, I was asked to present Sister Martin's Mother's Day card to her. Um, so when I think of mother, I instantly think of love. That's what we probably all think of when we hear the word mother. And yes, it would be easy for me to get up here and say a lot of the things that Brother Martin just said thinking of her as my mother-in-law and how she plays that role. But I'm kind of going to go back a little further before she ever came, became my mother-in-law, before I really became a member of this church, and how she showed love to me when she really didn't know me. So whenever I was 14 years old, I made up in my mind that I was going to serve God. And sorry, I'm not trying to get emotional here. Um, <laughs> But I made up in my mind that I was going to serve God, and I wanted to go to church full time, and I didn't have a way to get there. And, but I knew that down the road from me, they lived right down the street from me, and I knew that there was a pastor there, and I thought, I mean, if I'm going to go to a church, I might as well go ask a pastor, right? <laughs> so um, I walked down the road, and I just knocked on their door and asked for a ride to church, not really knowing them very well at all. I don't really recommend that to people, but um, to any of the kids, don't just go knock on people's door and asking for rides. But um, I did, and I'm so thankful that I did. For the next several months, Sister Martin herself gave me a ride to church every single service. Even when she had to come early, she came by my house to pick me up. And I'm so thankful for that because that made a difference in my life. I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for her. I don't really know where I would be, but I'm thankful for that sacrifice. And that is her heartbeat. Her heartbeat is you, the church. There's been countless times that people have called her or texted her just asking for prayer for various needs, and she will pause her life in that moment to pray for you, no matter what we're doing. If we're having dinner, if we're out to eat, if we're shopping, if we're grocery shopping, if we're sitting in our living room talking, if we're playing in the pool, no matter what it is, she will stop and take a moment for each one of you. And so I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart 
and everyone else. It's not much, but happy Mother's Day. Wow. I love you, Sarah. That was sweet. I never knew when I was picking up Sarah that she would be my daughter-in-law. That's just, that's a God thing, isn't it? God just does awesome things, things that we don't even think about. He's going to do it. And when we would, when I would pick her up, Sarah, she wouldn't even talk. She would be so nervous. She would, she would just, I'd have to get everything out of her. And as I've talked to her later, um, she was like, I was just so scared of you. And I'm like, why is everybody scared of me? But anyway, y'all can be seated. Thank y'all for honoring me. It is a joy being y'all's pastor's wife. I know this is probably one of the smallest Mother's Day we've had in a long time. We have numerous that said they were going to be with their mother today. And then we still have some staying home from COVID. I'm just ready for COVID to leave. Leave us alone. What a blessing to be in God's house this Mother's Day. All of us here today are products of a mom giving birth to us. We're grateful to our moms for giving us life. What a blessing to be living in the end times where we can be used mightily in this world. I know in a congregation this size that today is a day of happiness, but for some it's also a day of grief, pain, and sorrow. The, in the Bible, Paul tells us, rejoice with those that rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. So with that said, I'm going to cover different categories this morning in my greeting to you. To those who gave birth this year to their first child, we celebrate you. To those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. To those who have experienced loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or running away, we mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, tears of disappointment, we walk with you. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, we need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you. To those who lost their mothers this year, we grieve with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge your experience. To those who lived through driving tests, medical tests, and the overall testing of motherhood, which there's many, we are better for having you in our midst. To those who have aborted children, we remember them and you on this day. To those who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children, we mourn that life has not turned out the way that you had thought it would be. For those who step parent, we walk with you on these complex paths. To those who envision lavish and love on grandchildren, yet that dream is not to be, we grieve with you. To those who place children for adoption, we commend you for your selflessness and remember how you hold that child in your heart. To those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. So this morning, we are all here with different emotions, but I want to welcome each of you here today at the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. And I have a little a few things planned, but before I forget, at the, where are my, can you get some people to help you and spread out those recipe cards. Just spread them all out over the platform. Get you some help while I'm talking. At the end of service, be sure to pick up in all of the little uh, pans. I've got some spoons. If you'll, all of the adult ladies, if you'll pick up a spoon, and then I believe there should be a recipe available for all of you. If everybody brought recipes. <laughs> so what? Do it over uh, on the platform too, please, so everybody's not around the cakes and stuff. Thank you. 
Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a word scramble and everybody can participate. They're gonna put the word up there and you try to unscramble it. And um, then after a few minutes, they'll put what the, what the word is. And it's all going to be spices. Can we get it going, brother? Okay, y'all know what it is? Good. They're quick, so you got, all right, next one. Yeah, loud, y'all. Next. Yes. Next. <laughs> Loud. Do y'all know? Yes. Next. Next. Y'all good. Next. 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 Y'all got it? Yes, I heard it. Next. Next. I've never bought this in my whole life. I don't even know what it is. Yes. Next. This is easy. You use it normally like in the winter time usually. Next, so go ahead, do all spice. Yes. Next. They've, they've guessed it, brother. Next. 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 Go ahead and show it. I don't know if they'll get it. Next. Yes. Y'all are good. <laughs> Next, show it. Yes. Yes. Next, this is the last one. No one's, okay, you, go ahead. Chili powder. Okay, who has my names? All right, okay, it's time to do the door prizes. Is my grandson Gage able to help me today? Okay, come on up. Can you draw, draw one for me? Just draw one piece of paper for me. Okay. Do one. Two. Three. I need three more. All right, when I call your name, uh, just stand here in front and Cadence, if you'll get the bags for them when they come up. Sister Doobie. 
Stand up here in front of the pulpit. Nancy Newcomb. Is Nancy in the building? If you'll come up here, if you, if you can, if not, we can bring it to you. Janet, I, I'm sorry, Jan, if there, is there a Janet here? Janet? McClellan, Macillan, Janet? I can't see. Okay, if you'll come up. Myra Silas. Come on up. Sister Louise Grady. Sister Maria Cruz. Come on up. If y'all line up in front over there, may, for a pretty picture, like maybe three here and three on that side. And Cadence, sister, that one goes to Sister Nancy back in the back, right there. If you, can you take it? Yeah. Oh, she's already got it. Okay. All right. Okay, you got your picture? All right, thank y'all. We have a video for y'all to listen to and watch, and then I'll go into my message. Thank you. 
Wow. Is that reality for some of you? <laughs> okay. Before I get into my message, I have a couple more things. Sister Merle, you don't have to come up, but if you can stand up so everybody can see our beautiful Sister Merle. <laughs> Sister Merle, she's a treasure. She's been a pastor's wife, and she has been a blessing to this church. She just comes, and she is so faithful, and she sits there, and she comes to almost every service. She loves church. She has been to numerous ladies' conferences with me and the ladies, and we have a blast when she's with us. And today, Sister Merle, I am making you a diamond lady and that means at Ladies Conference, your name will be on the wall, okay? And you'll get to get that special bag that they give you. <laughs> God bless you, and I love you, and thank you for your faithfulness all these years to the house of God. One more is, I can't let this day go by without my mom, and yes, you're shaking your head, but I want you to come up here. Come on. <laughs> I, there's a reason I'm making you a diamond lady too but I want you to come up here let me help can some men help my mom <laughs> she, I'm going to get in trouble because she doesn't like to do this but it's for a reason she has taught me to serve and work all of my life in the house of God. And really, she's the one that wanted to be a pastor's wife. <laughs> she tells me all the time, I, I wanted to be able to do more for the Lord. <laughs> but she was a Sunday school teacher, but that is the best calling that you can have. But before I uh, minister today, y'all all know that I am not a preacher. I just do this out of submission to my husband. And... <laughs> And don't judge what you hear today on if you're coming to this church or not, because my husband's the preacher, I'm not. And, uh, but before I go into my message, I want my mom to pray for me. I'm not at a loss for words, ever. <laughs> <laughs> I've already prayed for her for this anointing for the Lord to help her to reach the people. I want this church to grow and come and fill all of these benches. I wish everybody could bring one visitor every week and, and just think how many each person would bring if they brought one visitor every week. This church would be full. And I pray that the Lord gives Janitha strength and help to help all of us to make heaven our home. It probably won't be long for me, but I want her to be anointed and I want her to raise my grand, great grandchildren to live for the for the Lord the, all the days of her life. Bless her, Lord, as she speaks this morning. Help her to be able to touch the hearts of the people here. Dear Jesus, I love you, Lord. Thank you that I had a mother that brought us all together to love you, that she's walked the aisles of this church and help Janitha to walk the aisles of this church. We love you, Jesus. Take care of us all that have lost our mothers this week. Oh God, take care of Janitha as she talks and prays and listens to the will of the Lord in her life. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, my opening scripture is 1 John 2, 5, and 6. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. You may be seated. 
My sermon title is The Difference Five Eggs Make. And you can put that up, please. I think there's one I had sent um, that should have been, but we'll just go ahead and use that. Kids, raise your hands if you've ever cooked with your mom or your grandmother. Good. So we got some kids that like to cook and some teenagers. When I was a kid, I loved to bake, and I had this oven called an Easy Bake Oven. Do they still have those today? All right. Who has one? No one? One of my favorite recipes that I started cooking when I first got married was Toe House chocolate chip cookies. As a mother and now a nene, I can't begin to tell you how many batches of cookies I have made. Every time the family gets together, guess what they're requesting? Sometimes I want to make something different, but they always want the chocolate chip cookies. It's important that I don't change those ingredients. Who wants the ingredients to change after you've been baking something for 20-something, 30-something years? My aunts, uncles, cousins, and my boys, they would not like it if I suddenly changed the amount of chocolate chips that I put in my cookies. There's a standard of measurement, and it's for a reason. It, it works. It has been tried, and it has been tested. We as Christians, we don't need to start changing the ingredients in the Bible. Deuteronomy 4 and 2. You shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take from it that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. Kids, moms, dads, chefs, can you tell me why it is important to begin with a recipe? You have to know the ingredients to use, and you have to know how much to use. Is that right? It's important to fo follow the recipe exactly if you want it to come out. Good. What are some basic ingredients in cookies or cakes that are the basic ingredients? That, eggs. That's right. That's the main ingredient. One day in February, I was craving an old-fashioned pound cake. I don't think I'd ever made a pound cake. But for some reason, I had seen it, probably on social media, and I thought, hmm, that sounds good. I would like that. I had Gage with me, and Gage and I decided we were going to bake a cake. So we gathered all of the ingredients. We mixed it together. We mixed the wet ingredients. And as I was putting in the sharpening that it called for, I happened to look and it said, butter sharpening. Well, I just had plain sharpening. So I thought, well, I can fudge a little bit. I'll just put a dab of butter in there. So I just put a dab of butter in there. And then I sifted the dry ingredients and I mixed it with the wet ingredients and I poured it in my pan and since I've never made this cake before, I really didn't notice, you know, that something was not right about it. But Gage and I, we stuck it in the oven and we went outside and we started playing and then we came back in to check and oh, a glorious smell was going through, the aroma was all in my house. We looked in the oven and I knew, uh-oh, something is wrong. I didn't say anything. I just kind of let it keep cooking, and then it came time to get the cake out, and Sarah was outside, and the family was outside, and I get the cake out, and I was like, something is wrong with this cake, and I started thinking back, and I was like, oh, I got distracted, and I don't recall us cracking any eggs and that was the main thing I wanted Gage to get to do, was to crack the eggs. Guess how many eggs this recipe called for? Five. Five eggs. That's going to be a bad cake. 
So distractions can cost you. And it cost me my cake that day. If you look over here, you can see the difference between I made two cakes yesterday. And pound cakes take 90 minutes to bake. That's a long time. So anyway, you can see which one has the eggs and which one doesn't. Is there anyone that wants to try them? Brother Joel, come on up. Brother Joel, since you were such a good sport, you can take the good cake home. Because of leaving the eggs out, our cake was not pretty. And due to adding an ingredient that the recipe did not call for, caused the results to be bad. And we just had that witness today. That's what happens to us in life. When we don't follow instructions from our parents, authorities, or the Word of God, most times things turn out badly. We can't modify things. When it comes to bacon, eggs are a vital ingredient for structure, texture, and flavor. Eggs help create structure and the stability within the batter. They help thicken sauces and custards. They add moisture to cakes. They even act as a glaze. The Word of God acts like the egg. The Word provides us with stability. It gives us structure. We need families that have the Word in their hearts. That is what provides a stable family. It provides a stable family for generations and generations. Psalm 62 and 1. Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from Him. Truly He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress and I never, I will never be shaken. I want the Word. I can't afford to be shaken. So I've got to have the Word. God needs strong families serving Him. Our church, our community needs stable families, not wishy-washy families, not one day this and one day that. They need to see consistency, and that's where the Word comes in. It's vital that our families are applying the Word of God in their hearts and passing it on to their children. Moms, your little ones need to see you reading the Bible at home. They need to see you praying at home. It's not something that should just be happening here in the house of God. They need to see you do it at church too. Eggs are used in a variety of ways, but mostly used as firmness and flavor. They make your product tender. 
The pound cake gauge and I made, it was not tender and the flavor was not good. As Christians, we need to be firm on what we know is right and we need to add flavor in this world. We need to have so much flavor that we have the aroma coming out of us that people are attracted to us. When, they're, when a restaurant has good food, it's going to be busy with people. And that's how I want to be, and I want this church to be. I want it to be, us to be so flavorful that people are going to want to come and get what we have. Is that your desire? Do we have the right ingredients, spiritual ingredients in the recipe that's going to get us to heaven? Matthew 5, 13, you are the salt of the earth, but the salt loses its saltiness. How can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. I don't want to be thrown out. Well, I'm planted here on earth. I want to add good flavors to this world and be a blessing to my family and to this world. Missing just one ingredient will make your cake turn flat, crumbly or not taste sweet. Just because my cake was smelling glorious, it was not good. It was a counterfeit, and I don't want to be a counterfeit. Let me just put, put in this. What your pastor preaches, you need to endorse it. You need to be respectful to what your pastor asks you to do. There are some things that it just might be his um, wish for leadership. But some things, it might can take you down another path. And personally, I have seen it happen many times when people start going astray. It, a lot of times it's from little things that's really not sin issues. It's just a little bit of rebellion. It is important to feed our soul with the right ingredients and not get distracted. As we follow the Bible, which is the recipe God has written with all of the ingredients, we need to get us to heaven and live a great life here on earth. Most of us are aware of product labels. As moms, we all want to make sure that we are feeding our family nutritious meals. We may have health issues that we need to control. So the ingredient labels, they're beneficial to us. The labels inform us of what we need for our daily nutrition. So the labeling is important. It keeps us healthy. It keeps you safe. It stops you from buying something that's really, when you buy chocolate, you wanna know it's chocolate, right? That's what the label helps you with. It detects ingredients that can cause you to have reactions and you can become ill and you can even die. And it stops you from wasting food. Food labels are easy to ignore. I normally don't. Only time I really look at the labels when I'm grocery shopping is I have decided to start a new diet or if there's a health issue that I need to cut back on something. But it's so important. The Bible is the living word, and it is the key ingredient for maintaining a healthy Christian walk. How many times do we ignore the Bible that sits on the shelf? God's word is compared to daily bread. It's our daily nutrition. It keeps us healthy. It keeps my attitude in check. It is the food guaranteed to make me stronger spiritually. So why do we leave it on the bookshelf and only open it when we're in need? Just like we ignore the labels on the food products, we ignore the good book. And it has all the ingredients we need. Vibrant, healthy Christians eat right. We need spiritual health food to counter the influences of our spiritual junk food. When kids eat snacks all day, they usually don't want to eat dinner. As a family, we need to make sure movies, sports, electronic devices, gaming products, gaming games, electronic games, and other types of entertainment don't crowd 
over our Bible reading and our prayer time and our Christian fellowship. How many times do we not gather in the house of God because of entertainment? We need to seek our most important nutrition first and refuse dessert until we've eaten enough to keep our souls nourished. Matthew 6 and 33, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Matthew 4 and 4, man shall not live alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Psalms 34 and 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. We don't fast often these days, but it was much more common in the past. I remember my husband's grandfather, he did a 40-day fast one time. You don't hear many things about that nowadays. However, today's Christians, we are fasting. And you know what we're fasting? We're fasting on God's Word. We can literally starve ourselves from God's Word. Let's not ignore the ingredients that the Bible has given us. What are some ingredients we can't leave out when we're raising our Christian family. When we think about raising godly and Christ-loving children, the main ingredient is love. The primary ingredient that goes into raising children is love. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. God love, God's love must be modeled in our homes. When, we, when love is lacking in the home, the family falls apart. When families fall apart, guess what else falls apart? Society does. And I believe that is what we are seeing in the world today. All of the hate comes from not having love. As Christians, we have a high calling to build strong homes for the good of our children, society, and for the glory of God. Matthew 6 and 15, another ingredient, and it's a powerful ingredient, is forgiveness. Such an important ingredient to include is in Matthew. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Another ingredient is prayer that we've got to have. It's a key ingredient. We all carry around our phone, and most of us stay connected on the airways continually. Probably most everybody has a phone in this room today. The most powerful mode of communication with our Creator is through prayer. You have heard the old saying, a family that prays together stays together. God blesses families who pray together giving them increased peace, love, and harmony in the home. As a pastor's wife, I've heard many times families come to us and they say they don't pray together, that they don't pray with their spouse, that they're intimidated and embarrassed. You need to work through that because I tell you what, I love it when I get to sit at home and pray with my husband when we can pray together. There's a peace and a unity that comes through prayer when a family prays together. Family prayer is also a great way to help your younger children develop habits of praying. Another vital, important ingredient is fellowship. God's Word reminds us we need to be in fellowship, communion in one accord with like-minded believers. It's important that when we have church that you bring your family to church. It's important when we have youth events that you bring your youth to those events. It's important when we have special events at the church that you come together with your family. This is one of the most neglected ingredients for good Christian living. Many churches are struggling to keep doors open because of a lack of desire together. Hebrews 10 and 25. Paul reminds us that avoiding fellowship is a real detriment to spiritual growth. The scripture reads, not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, 
but exhort in one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. During the pandemic the world has been facing, this has been my biggest concern. I've seen it happening in our church and it concerns me. Families benefit from both the spiritual and social aspects with church attendance. At church, your children will learn about Jesus. They make friends who have similar beliefs and will be a good influence. Principles learned at church helps reinforce the values taught at home. Parents, it's up to you to reinforce at home what the pastor teaches. There are some things, which I just said earlier, that are just the pastor's preference for leadership. But there are many other things that could lead your children down a different path and that would affect them for generations to come. And with that, I'm going to tell the story of Hannah. That is a beautiful story of Hannah. She was so heartbroken because she couldn't have children. And she went to the temple and she prayed and she petitioned God for a child. She made a promise that God would give her a child that she would give him back all the days of his life. Now, that was a big commitment. That would be hard to do, wouldn't it? But guess what? Eli, the priest, thought she was drunk, but she told him of her circumstances, and he told her, go home in peace, and may the Lord grant you what you have asked. She bore a child, and his name was Samuel. And when he was weaned, which in that day was probably three to five years of age, she kept her promise, and she took him to the temple. Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli the priest. But what is so sad about the end of this story is the priest. Is, the priest had sons. Eli's sons were sinning, and they were not following the recipe in the Bible. Eli rebuked them, but they continued. But they did not follow the recipe that God had planned for their life. God had planned a generation of blessings for that, that family tree. But because they didn't follow the recipe, two sons were killed. And then when Eli heard about his son's death and that the ark, a covenant had been taken, he fell over and he broke his neck and died. Their family blessings for generations suffered because of not following the recipe God had for their family. Blessings can be passed on or they can be taken away. What do you want for your family today? I don't know about you, but I want my family to be saved. I want to my life, what I do for my children to be a blessing to them and not a curse to my children. They will have, the Lord doesn't come, they will have, my grandchildren will have children. And I might do something that will affect their walk with God. I want to be right. Gage, Micah, Trenton, Sarah. I want to live a life that's going to be a blessing to y'all. I want my family to love God. I want my church family to love God. I want all of us to follow the recipe that's in the Bible. Do you love the Word of God? Do you want to make it to heaven? Judges 21 and 25, in those days, Israel had no king. Everyone did as they saw fit. In my daily, daily reading this year, I have gotten to Judges in the Old Testament, and my eyes have been open of how off course each generation became. Their forefathers gave them the examples, and they had been mightily blessed each generation. But some things had been added Two, and some things have been taken away from their recipe. And because of that, they suffered mightily. 
if you the baker left out certain ingredients or added others that the recipe did not call for if you use the right ingredients but the wrong proportions it is entirely possible with these combinations that you would not end up with a cake you need to follow the instructions how many times do we have a problem and we know that that problem could have been better it could be fixed, it could be solved, or it would not have even have happened if we would have followed the recipe that God gave us. God doesn't need our help. We don't need to add to it. I'm reminded of the story of Sarah and Abraham. They were promised a child, but you know what? They couldn't wait. They couldn't wait for it to happen. So they wanted to help God out. Did it really help God out? Look what it's caused. It's caused trouble in the land because of them not following the recipe. We are to be like God. We need the ingredients that are going to produce the potential to be as close, as perfect as possible. When people see us, our families, they need to be able to read the ingredients we are made up of. Our choices in life should represent godly ingredients. We don't wanna be that counterfeit label. 1 John 3 and 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth yet not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we, He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Today I ask you to take a look at your spiritual ingredient label. Are there ingredients that need to be removed, such as bitterness, hate, jealousy, doubt, pride, unfaithfulness, or dishonesty? Do you need to add and stir in some ingredients of love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control? I beg of our families not to ignore the spiritual label ingredients that are in the Holy Bible. If we really feast off of the Bible and apply it to our lives, I have seen families changed and blessed. And my family is one of those because of following the recipe. We had to make some changes, but I'm so happy that we did. But it is a continuation of feasting off of the written word. Just like our natural bodies become hungry, we have to read and meditate on the word daily to keep us with the vital spiritual nutrients that will keep us spiritual healthy. The Bible is the recipe your family needs. Are you tired of hearing that? God's recipe is important. It keeps you safe. It keeps you from being counterfeit. It detects when things can cause harm. Our home should be a happy place. If we have the proper ingredients in our spiritual recipe, it will be easy to stir in giggles, serve up joy, stir in smiles, mix in blessings, scoop up love. And one ingredient that we can't leave out, you can stand, we need to teach our children the plan of salvation. They need to repent, be baptized in Jesus' name, and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. When all those ingredients are blended, you can taste happiness. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Can we gather in the front, if, we, if you can, with your families, and let's just take out time to pray and thank the Lord for our Grandma many blessings. Grandma used to pray out loud. By your bed every night To me it sounded like mumbling Like she was out of her mind She said, boy, this kind of praying Is what saved my life You ought to try it sometime Now I know she was right She was talking to Jesus she was talking to Jesus She was talking to Jesus For all of her life Mama used to drag me to church Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights and Khaki pants and a polo shirt and Boy, I put up a fight she said, son, one day you'll thank me For 
haven't got in your life And yeah, I know she was right Yeah, my mama was right Cause now I'm talking to Jesus She got me talking to Jesus She got me talking to Jesus Yeah, my mama was right Tries to raise them up right My oldest is 15 And I remember what that was like Trying to deal with the drama Trying to figure out the questions of life I've been looking for a way to show him How to make it right Then he walks in my room when I was saying my prayers the other night He said I'll come back later I can tell you got a lot on your mind I said it's not an eruption You couldn't have picked a better time Cause I was just talking to Jesus Come over and give me a try yeah. Not a bad time to start You don't have to sound pretty Just tell them what's on your heart Cause it's not a religion It's more like a friendship Just talk to your father Like you are his kind
friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Whoa. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Whoa. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Whoa. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Whoa. Hi, this is Pastor Kevin Martin, and I just want to thank you all for joining us today, tuning in and being a part of our service. We hope that it was a blessing to you and that you were uplifted and encouraged and felt the presence of the Lord. If you would like to know more about our church, please join us at www.atascacitaupc.com and you will find all of the ministries. You will find pictures where you can take a journey and see everything that's been going on at the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. And uh, we hope that you join us again very soon. God bless you.